my mother was a champion. Mm -hmm. And um, my uncle, Harry Champion, his mm -hmm. wife, Ann Champion, uh, was school teacher at Norris. Mm -hmm. He was my basketball coach and my history teacher, my mentor, and someone who kept me in line. Mm -hmm. And my aunt, Ann Champion, she taught mathematics and homemaking, I think, for a while. And she also kept me in line. My father, W.T. Turner, was basketball coach. <laughs> he kept me alive. So I, I, all my all my relatives were were school teachers. Uh -huh. You know, I was raised. My mom and dad divorced early on, so I was raised as a champion. Uh -huh. I was on Turner, and I was very uh, um, they spoiled me. They were real bad. Uh -huh. That was. There was a chemical plant. When you, it's, it's gone now. Um, the, when you come out of the cemetery, mm -hmm. uh, where to you, to your left there's a mound and a fence. Mm -hmm. But there was a chemical plant there that made uh, the insecticides and, and pesticides for farmers and stuff. Uh -huh. uh, high yield, uh -huh. and they didn't have proper disposal methods. And there was a little creek that ran alongside of it. They ran from that plant all down by Nara School, uh -huh. all down by down to the cemetery. I mean, it was a quick wide as this hallway here. I mean, it's ran there. And um, sometimes they'll have spillage, or they would have just accidents, mm -hmm. wastes and stuff, and it runs. So it, 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 first, they thought it killed the animals. Cows who would drink from the water would die. Uh, people who, kids who played in the water would come up with rashes. Mm -hmm. And so there was some Caucasian people there for the dam. The state mm -hmm. took her son mm -hmm. to Dr. Uh, White's office, I believe mm -hmm. it was at the time, and he diagnosed it as some type of contamination, whatever. They sampled the water, but they kept it down the dam for a couple of years. They paid her off and kept it down for a couple of years. So you know how things are, they eventually get out. Mm -hmm. So we got out about that. And there was a coming down by the name of Wendell Turley, and we all met together at the old church. Uh -huh. Decided we would secure his law firm for to represent us, and he did. Uh, everyone who could claim residency received some money for him from it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about eight thousand, five thousand, mm -hmm. ten thousand there. The mm -hmm. lawyer got about sixty percent of it. <laughs> and that their plant was closed, mm -hmm. and they had to make it a. Uh, you know, put up signs saying it was quarters and stuff. But uh, a lot of women uh, came up with ovarian cancer. Uh, just, just everybody. So, wow. uh, I remember reading about it years ago. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. It was sad. It was a sad situation. It was, and we had to fight that thing for about five years before. Uh, the resolution was made about it because mm -hmm. they didn't want to pay and they offered pennies at first. Uh -huh. So Lars said, no, we need more than that. And then when the money was here, there were people who never lived here who came. <laughs> you know, I was going to my yard one day, one guy said, where, where's our school at? I said, they care to give money away. I said, you go down here and make a laugh and there it is, buddy. <laughs> That. My mom and my dad, you mm -hmm. know, they they are my biggest role models mm -hmm. because having 13 kids, you know, seven boys and six girls, we never went hungry, we never wanted for anything. And believe it or not, the Dennis family was the first somebody on the television on College Hill. <laughs> everybody came from school teachers, everybody came to my house and my mom would pop popcorn and we would all sit in the floor chairs and whatnot, and we would watch TV. Cause actually, kind of, our house was the movie theater. <laughs> Cause everybody came. My mom, she welcomed everybody. You know, don't care who you are. You know, if we had food, everybody had food. Mm -hmm. Let me go back when I was going to East Texas State University, and uh, I, I majored in animal science. And I started school two weeks late. And I didn't have the books that we need, you know, for that. But it happened to be an old rancher. I was the only black in this class. 
and it happened to be this old rancher. He he he, he took a liking to me for some reason, mm -hmm. you know, and he, at, on break and at lunch period, he would give me his books and let me study his books on break. So we had this lady instruct. I never will forget a bit she was about your size, about your height. And she told me I wasn't going to make it in her class. Uh -huh. She was determined that this black boy, you know, back then, I know I should be, she used the N-word. I ain't going to make it in this class. He's the only black. He ain't going to make it. Y'all, every test that I took, I made 98. Uh -huh. Never fell under 98. When it comes to the end of the semester, she gave me a 76 uh -huh. and flunked me. Now, I'm a straight-A student. She gave me a 76 at the end of the mess and flunked me. I took that to the dean. I'm not, I'm, I'm not thinking back to the name of Dean Morton. I am, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. <clears throat> I took all my paperwork, all my test scores, and I took it to the dean. You know he wouldn't help me? Mm. He told me there nothing he could do. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an abstract line. And so what I did then... Since I couldn't make it in animal side, I went into business management. Mm -hmm. And that's where I learned business management. Mm -hmm. I stopped taking the animal science course and I went into business management, you know. And that's how I got my business management degrees and education like that. Don't like it because she was determined that this black ain't gonna make it. Mm -hmm. And she saw that I didn't make it mm -hmm. in her class or in that field. Mm -hmm. But I made it in business and like I said, I the Ku Klux Klan came here. You remember when it was burning those churches? Oh, yes, there? yes, yes. The Ku Klux Klan came here, but the Klan that came here, they were the kind of like a good Klan, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, they had a rally down there at the courthouse, mm -hmm. you know. So every, all the black people, white people, everybody, they were over across the Lee Street. And wouldn't nobody go over there on the side of the courthouse where the Klan was. So I went over there. Uh -huh. And so I started talking to him, and I asked him, could I join the Klan? You know, I'm serious. Uh -huh. <coughs> and they told me, no, you're the wrong color. I said, well, I believe in the same thing y'all believe in. Uh -huh. I said, you believe you white folks should marry white folks. I said, I believe white folks should marry when black should be married, marry. You know, so I said, I said, I'm going to talk to him. And boy, they gave me a bunch of memorabilia, man. I, uh -huh. I used to keep it for a long time uh -huh. that they gave me. I, I, wasn't, I just wasn't afraid. Uh -huh. To speak up or talk to nobody, mm -hmm. you know. And then after they left, the old bag clan came in, mm -hmm. and then all the black and white kids, everybody stuck together and run them out of town. Mm -hmm. yeah. They closed. I went to work at L three. Mm -hmm. I hadn't been there six months, and they went to talking about the layoff, and I said, "Oh no." I got a family, I got to provide for these kids, and it just, it's just not gonna work. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go to work for the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. So I went and applied for the job. And uh, you know, it, it's real funny how I told, I went in and told them I need a job, and I want to talk to the sheriff. And I went in, they introduced me to Bobby Young, and. Mm -hmm. He knew my family, he knew my dad, he knew my background. Mm -hmm. He said, son, I said, go cut. I had, at that time, you know, uh, black guys, most of them were Afro. Well, I had a pretty good size Afro back then uh -huh. and a full beard. Uh -huh. And he told me, he said, go get your hair cut and come back. Let me see what you look like up under that. I told him, I leaned over on his desk and I looked him right straight now and I said, now if I go get my hair cut and I shave all my beard off and you don't hire me, I'm going to kick your ass. And he looked at me, he said, you know, I do believe you mean that. So I went and got a haircut and came back. He took me out to L3. They got all my papers and stuff and I worked for Bobby Young for five and a half years. Uh -huh. uh, it was a real experience being the first black deputy sheriff. Now, they had some other policemen like Wilbur Daniel and uh, Willie Frank Duffy. I think Titus Hill and uh, Mr., what was his name? Uh, E.T. Taylor. 
I think they were reserved, but mm -hmm. Wilbur Dangan and Willie Frank Duffy were policemen. Mm -hmm. And but being the first black deputy sheriff was really a thrill. Mm -hmm. All my family was really they were really uh happy. You know, mm -hmm. I stayed there five and a half years and uh we kind of got to where I never could move up, and that bothered me. Uh -huh. You know, it really bothered me to not move up. I see guys coming in and work up six, seven months, they get moved up to sergeant or lieutenant or something. I had been there three years and hadn't moved up anywhere, mm -hmm. and that began to bother me. And uh, you had mentioned Center Point uh, Baptist Church, Center Point Christian, Christian Church. Church. Uh -huh. Which one started first? Uh, this one started first. Okay. This one started first, and then the rural one. Okay. Center Point was a rural. He said when when AJ started this church, he said the people in the rural area need a church to go mm -hmm. to too. Mm -hmm. So they started out there, and then a cross road between my uncle Jay Hendricks and my great granddaddy, they started Church of Christ in a tent mm -hmm. right between the two houses. Uh huh. And that's where the Church of Christ started. And then uh, they got a preacher out of Dallas. Uh, uh, Reverend Nixon, I think, was the first one. They came here. They were up on Marsh Street. Right next to him is Primrose down okay. on Marsh Street. Okay. Right there in the flat. Okay. And that was the first one I remember having a building. It was a little old church there. Uh -huh. And uh, I think Wesley Pierce then was the last one that was in there. They, they, it was a... Uh, Pilgrim Tabernacle right. last. Uh -huh. But that's where the first uh, Church of Christ started uh -huh. on Marsh Street and then they're down there on Bodard Street, the same church. Okay. And uh, I read somewhere this church is over what it started. We're, we're 150, so, 156 years, I think. Is that one of the oldest churches in Greenville? Is that right out to slavery? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, well, see, he was. Uh, uh, A.J. heard a walk in slavery. Oh, okay, that's what I was trying to See, he came from uh, North Carolina. Okay. He was on a plantation up there. Uh, the, we used to have a dentist that had Jake King. Uh -huh. First time I ever got any teeth work done was Jake King. Mm -hmm. And he told my daddy, take him to the back door and come in. Uh -huh. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, tell us about that. About a year later, his grandson wanted to take a guitar lesson. Okay. Well, Mr. King brought his son to the house. Dad told him the same thing, take your son to the back door to come in. <laughs> he meant it. Uh -huh. But that's the way life was. Uh -huh. Now, this is a high-priced dentist that I want to get my teeth in. But I had to go in his back door because I was black. Uh -huh. Wow. But daddy returned the same favor when uh -huh. his grandson come to take guitar lesson. Uh -huh. He said, you got to go in the back. Uh -huh. And the man looked at him. Me going in the back, he said, if you want guitar lesson, you will. Mm -hmm. I had to go in the back and get my son's teeth fixed. So you take your grandson to the back and get guitar lessons. Uh, in the sixth grade, uh, uh -huh. we knew it was coming. We knew that integration was coming because it was in law and it was a matter of uh, moving into it. Mm -hmm. But we had a teacher mm -hmm. by the name of Mr. Melvin Gilstrap mm -hmm. and he would take time out and he would he would just basically come and, and, and share with us in the classroom setting that when you go and he would say it just like that, when you go to the white school, there are some things that uh, that's not going to be tolerated that are tolerated right here. Mm -hmm. And and you are just going to have to make the adjustments to it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, to me, uh, there was no direct or really uh, things identified mm -hmm. in a direct nature, but the thought process mm -hmm. was already uh, in place that there are some adjustments I'm going to have to make and I will make them or because I've been forewarned, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a little bit better prepared mm -hmm. to do them. Mm -hmm. The white teacher's not going to take time out uh, for your nonsense mm -hmm. that we consider play or, and I'm just being lighthearted. Uh -huh. Now, 
because there are more de definitive words that we mm -hmm. one can use, mm -hmm. but um, that's so far removed now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about what forty years ago mm -hmm. almost. If I'm probably under underselling it, mm -hmm. but uh, things were much different. Right. Things were much different. Uh, mm -hmm. The white teacher's not going to know your parents. Right. The white teacher's not going to be someone that you go to church service with. Mm -hmm. The white teacher's not going to see you over the summer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see you 12 months of the year, mm -hmm. and they may see, they're not going to, so it's going to be totally different. Mm -hmm. uh, their tolerance is going to be different. Okay. Their interest in your personal goals uh, are not going to be explored. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so those are the things that were lacking in integration. Uh -huh. Uh, the counselors didn't know how to respond to African American students. Mm -hmm. uh, in the high school, uh, a lot of the high school teachers did not move over to the high school. The black teachers didn't move over to the white schools. So, and I didn't say none didn't. I'm saying that a, a lot that we were accustomed to were not there any longer. So, therefore, uh, uh, we had to adjust to white teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, uh, like I say, that's so far removed. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure it still happens. Oh, I'm sure okay. it still happens. Okay. I get mm -hmm. And my favorite teacher uh, is Miss, uh, Mrs. Uh, Davison. Uh -huh. Gwendolyn, uh, uh, not Gwendolyn Davis, but Miss Davison was my first grade teacher. Uh -huh. And she's still alive. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, from that day that I arrived at Booker T. Elementary and uh, I was placed in her class, it was almost like uh, being at home with my mother every day. Uh -huh. But she had 30 students, uh -huh. but she made us all feel that way. Uh -huh. And so she really set a foundation of uh, being able to socially adjust mm -hmm. to so many different people that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And that carried me a long way. But there was no uh, favoritism. Uh -huh. It was just a kindness uh -huh. and a love and a patient mm -hmm. that she would that she has even today. Mm -hmm. But she was able to apply it to every student uh -huh. in that first year of school. Mm -hmm. Now, what we had in our communities were kindergarten, mm -hmm. we call, them. and you could probably start kindergarten at the in, at the age of four. Mm -hmm. And so those that went to kindergarten. Uh, had two years of schooling mm -hmm. and social interaction, mm -hmm. and then they came into the first grade. Mm -hmm. And you could see that those students were a little bit advanced, mm -hmm. and that's what it's for mm -hmm. in preparation. But Miss Davidson knew how to balance that out, uh -huh. and so those that uh, and 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 things like uh, uh, how things are at home uh -huh. is not going to affect anything about how things are done in this classroom. Mm -hmm. You are all equal. I know that you have uh, you will show a different uh, learning skill uh, separate from one another, mm -hmm. but that's not going to stop me from being your teacher uh -huh. and loving you equally with the rest of them. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So she's one, and I still see her uh -huh. from time to time. Yeah, let's talk. Brothers, well, that's where the faith comes in, uh -huh. because with the faith. Uh, with so many things that we have that that hinders uh, our society, uh, our social interaction, uh, we we are not of the same race uh, and uh, economic status, social status, uh, educational uh, accomplishments, uh, health, and, and the overall welfare of one. Uh, the thing about it is you still have a choice mm -hmm. as to whether you are willing to help a person or not, mm -hmm. no matter what your circumstances are. And that's one of the things I love about Christ is uh, sharing a life with Jesus is even on a person's sick bed, in which I have seen it many times, uh, a person has received mm -hmm. dire news that, you know, in a couple more months, you may not be here. Right, right. But because of their faith in Christ, mm -hmm they are still able to generate some inspirational things mm -hmm. when you visit with them. Mm -hmm. And so if a person who is on their sick bed can, can offer words of encouragement and inspiration, then a person that has a good job, mm 
that has a, a strong bank account, mm -hmm. that has a very comfortable lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, they can do that. Mm -hmm. If a person can is sick can do it, then every person can do that. And I think that every person that wakes up from one day to the next, they ought to take time out during their busy day mm -hmm. to say something kind to a person mm -hmm. or do something mm -hmm. uh, encouraging to, for a person. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that small thing, that small thing is so great, but we don't know, but it is. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to really uh, take into uh, account each day that we are valuable people. Every individual mm -hmm. has a great value. And if they will just take that little bit of value they have, or that great value they have, mm -hmm. and try to help another person, mm -hmm. and overcome the racial separation or the ra racial differences or the gender differences mm -hmm. or the financial differences that we have. Uh, just take time out and smell the roses uh -huh. and help somebody. Yeah. I don't care how small it is. Uh -huh. um, that's something I can mm -hmm. speak of encouraging every individual. Mm -hmm. In summarizing uh, Greenville, we've carried a weight Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some dark history, um, but of course, uh, there's always a silver lining in, mm -hmm. in all darkness. And and I just want to, I would just say, you know, listen, uh, we need to take pride in Greenville, mm -hmm. more pride in Greenville, and uh, and 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 just believe that you, as one person, can make a difference you can make a difference mm -hmm. and uh, take that and, and work with that one difference that you can make mm -hmm. and uh, and then try to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. uh, if I had to uh, say that to anyone, uh, you only got one life to live mm -hmm. and live it to the utmost. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't have to step on anybody mm -hmm. to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. God has really blessed this country uh, to where it is enough to go around and nobody has to be denied so that someone else can have more. Uh, we've got to come out of that selfish state and, and be willing to, to help each other mm -hmm. no matter what, no matter what. I feel like I'm in the fall, mm -hmm. five o'clock, I was crazy. <laughs> oh, people was telling the story and we got this lawyer all the dogs. He died a couple of years ago. Oh, what was his name? I don't get his name. Anyway, he was our lawyer. People was coming from everywhere. You know how it goes? Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. Prayer, everywhere. They, yeah, I stayed in common, so, 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 so. And we sat down and filled out this form. But this was, I was sitting beside the lawyer and everything. We just filled out the form. And one guy came and signed up. He said, where you live? So, 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 so. Well, I just got out of penitentiary. He said, <laughs> he said, you just got out of penitentiary. How, how you qualify for, for the money that you got? Oh, we had a pick up. And, uh, uh -huh. and so anyway, we was uh, filling out piece some of your, you know, how they go. Everybody was coming. So. Right. And so when I, I got, when they paid, paid some off and I got my check. And uh, so I went downtown. Wood City to cash my check. Uh, we can't cash your check. We have to mail it in. Uh, you can't cash. You can come leave your check and come. Oh no! Give me my check, here, Miss Lee. Uh huh. Uh huh. Give me my check. She gave. I said I can go to bottom where the where the, where the check was laid and get cash. Right. Down. And so the people downtown at the bank called an administrator and said. Miss Pender came up here with sixteen thousand dollars check or something, and then you know she started me. Oh, oh my goodness! When she came back, uh, 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 was passing that check that day, and she said, "Miss Pender, I'm gonna have to let you go." So I so you. I said, "Well, thank you, thank you, Miss Lady." And uh, mm -hmm. so my friend worked at the beauty shop, at the, at the white lady beauty shop. Mm -hmm. And said this. This administrator told 
This man, oh, I came in there with a $1,600 dollar check. She didn't need to work. I let her go. When we got ready to organize again, somebody to take it out name and somebody else had a date in ours. <laughs> oh my goodness. And so, but uh, when we first came here, uh -huh. they called it the, the duck duck. Uh, what you call it? Oh, wait a minute, they had a name for it. Dump, they called it the dump. The dump. The dump. Uh -huh. And then the next is called the hole. Oh, I remember the hole. The hole. Uh -huh. Well, we changed that hole. Uh -huh. That's where the North come in to come in at. We changed it to North Street Middle Street. Where are you going? Going down in the hole. What hole? We ain't got a hole down there. Uh-huh. Uh I remember that word. So we said, let's name it North Community. Uh -huh. So we had a meeting with the president of E.T. and whatnot. So the president wife got up and talking about the hole down there. So my good friend, Miss Harris, said, wait, hold it. It's no more than the hole. It's named the North Community. Ooh. Oh, God. Ah. In the majority of it, I was, you know, really young. Uh -huh. But uh, by the time I became like 12, 13 years uh -huh. old, she wasn't doing as much as she, you know, was. Because the mm -hmm. house was set up like a midwife house, you know, where she had the beds in this room, you know, the bathrooms and stuff. And, uh deliver the babies uh -huh. but when I became a little older you know um, like let's say about 12 and 13 14 uh -huh. um, she wasn't doing it as much in the home uh -huh. you know sometimes she would a lot she would go to the home to their uh -huh. homes uh -huh. and I would even help drive her sometime because I had uh, what they call hardship license uh -huh. and I would drive uh, my grandmother which was the midwife uh -huh. you know to some of the homes where she would deliver the babies wow. so you know I was uh you know, I seen that part of uh -huh. it, you know, just me, uh, I would take her, mm -hmm. I sit in the car sometimes, mm -hmm. or I'd take her and then leave her and then come back, you know, go back uh -huh. and pick her up. Uh -huh. So that's the part I knew. Uh -huh. I just knew of all the people and, you know, people coming back, you know, to the home, uh -huh. you know, well, you delivered my baby and then the people, the baby, the children, uh -huh. you know, oh, Miss Francis, you know, you delivered me and, you know, I just, they did. Uh, <laughs> It's funny, you know, they would come to her for different types of uh, ailments, uh -huh. you know. And um, so uh, one of the, the doctors here in Greenville, you know, provided her with the medication that uh, she had to, you know, administer to some of the patients. Uh -huh. So they did come to her. Now, I remember that a lot, you know. So we had, we was, we lived in East Hill, what they uh -huh. call East Hill. Uh -huh. uh, and then we moved. I moved to college, college hill. Uh -huh. And, uh, so they would still come there, you know, and I was in high, you know, junior high and high school uh -huh. during that time. And wow. they, people would still come to her for medical, uh, they trust attention. Her. Mm -hmm. Wow. Even delivered me. See, she was delivering babies even during my time, uh -huh. you know? Uh, so, and they'll say, well, your grandmother delivered me. And I said, what? You know, uh, I'll tell you this, my grandmother and my mother, but my mother delivered, helped my grandmother, but my mother delivered my husband. Wow. Of all the people. <laughs> I'm I'm married to one of my <laughs> grandmothers and mothers, you know, wow. products, you know. Uh -huh. So he was delivered by my family. Wow. And my husband. Well, I'm telling you how I got started. Okay. Uh, I think everyone knows uh, Mr. William Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was the superintendent here at, uh, in Greenville. Uh, mm -hmm a school a district mm -hmm. and uh his um it was his grandson uh -huh. they called me his his daughter was moving uh back uh you know to Greenville uh -huh. and that she was gonna be a teacher and that she was uh need they were needing someone to keep their little the grandbaby. Mm -hmm. You know, I never did think about you know, I didn't think about it. That's where I got started. Uh -huh. They said, Well you know well you're not working, can you just keep him? Uh -huh. You know and that's where I got started. And uh -huh. I just, I started from keeping uh, Mr. William Smith's grandson. Uh -huh. uh, and that's where I took off on my business. Wow. And it's something I just wanted to do. And I just stuck with it, uh -huh. you know, because she just kept, was just a nurse, doing just nudging uh -huh. me, you know, you know, like you said, that's what you want to do. Uh -huh. Take out. And I did it. Uh -huh. So I was I did it for 20 years. I loved it. I had children. From all walks of life, uh -huh. you know, all nationalities mm -hmm. have been here in my home. Wow. And I've raised so many children. 
Yeah. So they're coming back to you and say, you kept me. And then I kept, yes. And I, you know, once I kept the first, the first child then the, you know, I kept the sibling because uh -huh. others were going to school and yes, they, they still send me Christmas cards, the families, oh. you know, and then send me pictures of my children. I just uh -huh. have a chest for, I have just of the children that I have, you know, that have come through my, my daycare uh -huh. and that I have raised mm -hmm. and they're just still remembering me. Mm -hmm. And I do appreciate that, you mm -hmm. know. Because they send me pictures of the children, how they, you know, how they're growing up. Uh -huh. And my first, uh, the child that I kept, uh -huh. his name was Jaden. Uh -huh. And uh, when he graduated from high school, you know, that was the, that he was the first in the starting the daycare. Uh -huh. And then he was my first mm -hmm. child to ever to graduate yeah, high, high school. school. Oh, so, you know, I, you know, at least I lived through to see dad yes. and, and the other ones graduate. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've had uh, quite a few to graduate. So, Wonderful. and. Uh,